Welcome to Future Docs Podcast. I'm your co-host, Dr. Pedram Mizani, a Chief Clinical Officer here at AC Medical and also a family physician. And I am your other co-host, Dr. Lydia Iskander, a leadership intern here at AC Medical and a residency candidate. We also invite you to watch the video version of this podcast by visiting youtube.com forward slash AC Medical Org. This is episode number 66, part two of a three-part interview with our special guest today, Dr. Mario Mikhail. Graduated from Ancient's University Faculty of Medicine in 2009, a lifetime member of AC Medical, he secured a PG-11 categorical IM position in the 2022 match at a non-NRMP participating program, which we also refer to them as pre-matched programs. So our previous episode, episode 65, part one, we talked about the two types of uh, clinical experiences that Dr. Mikhail has uh, had the experience with us and the value of a personal statement and, and uh, you know, the, the, the repetitive nature of our, of our edits and how it helped his application and many other uh, AC Medical members. So I invite you to watch episode 65, part one of this three-part series. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing how to combine mentorship and constructive criticism and in order to be the most competitive version of yourself and we're going to discuss who really truly the most formidable competitors are and next week in episode number 67 we're going to discuss how international medical graduates should be able to spot their unfamiliarity with u.s healthcare culture u.s generally in, in u.s culture as well and how they should use all of that in order to build a an effective network so that hopefully they can secure a residency and continue to use that network for for um, an entire lifetime so with that like you're asking that dr michael what was your idea of a mentorship and what did ac medical offer you in terms of mentorship so first of all was the very first session was dr uh, mazani the strategy session in that session it was around 45 or maybe more, take or less, 15 or more minutes. On that session, we discussed our plan. Dr. Mazani highlighted the strengths in our CVs and, and the weaknesses and where to work exactly. And I remember that during that session, there was another participant and we were both married. So Dr. Mazani highlighted the challenging of being married and applying to the match. And he said, it's not going to be easy. You have to be prepared for the worst case scenarios, which is going to soap or going unmatched and reapplying next year. And uh, that was one of the things that I remember because it keeps pushing me during the season so that I don't go unmatched or go to soap. However, I was preparing myself to it too. So one of the things also was the time frame that Dr. Mazani put in my mind and I worked on it during the season. So yeah, it was so helpful. Thank you, Dr. Mikhail. Strategy session is critical, right? Because that sets the groundwork for what we need to do next. Thank next you. comes all of the individual pieces of an ERS application. If, if you're applying to the main match, um, if our listeners, you're applying to the San Francisco match, let's see ophthalmology, or in the Canadian residency match system, they're a little bit different, but this in particular residency application for, for the main match. Tell us a little bit more about where our mentorship made an impact in your ERS application, starting from its analysis and then on to a Saturday. So as I said before in the previous session, English is not our first language. And as IMGs, we we tend to name things differently. So one of the things that, for example, in Egypt, where I came from in my school, they call the last year internship which is where we do all the rotations. It's a different that's different. It's a system that's different than here in US. And uh, when I was um, writing my CV during the editing, I not I noticed by uh, the editors that internship here is the first year of residency. It's not the, the opposite as we tend to call it there. However, they call the rotations here clerkships. So those different naming and also prospects are and different systems are what makes or creates a mess in our CV so that the program director don't understand what is there. And that's what where also the editing of AC Medical helps a lot because it, it corrected my uh, my misnaming and uh, my misunderstanding. And one of the things that, that I at least care a lot about is to not make the application so, you know, too exciting, right? Because uh, if we start to get, 
you know, too animated in, in these applications, then it starts to lose this conservative nature. And it doesn't sound like how physicians speak behind closed doors and how residents speak behind closed doors as, as they look at these applications. So we try to tone it down a lot as well, but to remain very focused and very relevant and to also make sure that you're competing against your number one competition. And who would you say is your number one competition in the annual match? Dr. McHale? Who did you think it was and who do you know it is now? Well, I think it was uh, when I uh, started the IMGs. I thought that I'm competing with the IMGs uh, themselves, but it turned out that we should compare ourselves to the AMGs. And the reason I'm saying this is that because they they graduate with a big chunk of loan. And um, speaking about the loans and uh, financial hardship, we all have our own case scenarios, but financial hardship is one of the challenges that most of us face, at least for in my case, as a married person and the family guy, I think the financial burden is something that we should also be prepared to handle and to deal with. And if we compare ourselves to the AMGs in regard of this, we'll be in a good situation. Also comparing between us and them because they graduate from schools which prepare them to be ready to work here. However, we come from countries that prepare us to different systems. So in order to get in the same position as they are, we need to put a lot of hard work. And by hard work, I mean getting as, as much hands-on rotation here to learn more about the system. And do you believe that once you start residency or any resident, should you or residents just solely rely on advisors that are provided by the residency program? Or do you think that they should uh, look a little bit farther and kind of more outside of that? I believe the, uh, we should do both. The reason I'm saying this is because there are some things and some stuff that you are not feeling comfortable to discuss with the program mentors themselves. And it's always helpful to have some professional mentor from outside of your program that has been through the process and have experienced everything so that he can put you in the right direction and also advise you a genuine advice. And you don't look uh, good if you go to the program mentors and ask them about small stuff that might be handled by yourself. How do you know you have the right mentor? So the right mentor will always be the one that gives you an advice that helps you reach the goals where you want. He shares your vision. He have been through the process before. He had experience helping others with the fruitful results. So of course you ask and by learning from others you build your knowledge and you have the right mentor it's not an easy process of course dr michael who were some of the first people you reached out to as you began preparing for the match and what help did you seek well uh the first uh, people that i reached out for was uh, my uh, alumni and my classmates some of those are the people that I was studying with during preparing for the steps and some of the graduates from my own medical school back in Egypt. Help that they helped me was, um, one of them was uh, advice, of course, which is really valuable. Another thing was helping in writing my personal statement and uh, reviewing it and editing it also. They also teach me and give me a lot of knowledge about the process where, uh, how to prepare for it and how to get ready for the match. They also helped me in the um, interviews, in the mock interviews, which um, helped me change 180 degree in my performance because the more you do this, the better you get. So yeah, it was very helpful to reach out for those people, of course. Now, how do you describe AC Medical's approach to assistance, criticism versus your classmates and, and alumni? Well, for the criticism, I think it's it's one of the most important things uh, in this journey because we come from countries we're not prepared for this uh, process. We don't know anything about it. So in order to get better, you need to hear a lot of, uh, of criticism. The difference between the criticism I got from my alumni is that they were trying to be as kind as they can and they were trying to be smooth in their approach. However, AC Medical was a very professional, I would say, in regard of go going to the point directly. And I would say that without this criticism, you will not get better. Because if your mentor doesn't criticize you, he will not be able to help you.
and and the way you handle this criticism is not by saying that's me the more criticism that you get the better room of improvement you have you mentioned interviews what were some of the really interesting questions that you were asked and which you believe that you answered better more effectively after you received all the mentorship and, and criticism so one of the questions that I was really prepared to was a question about my age, of course, and my previous experience. And if I can handle dealing with interns that are going to be younger than me and they are going to be giving me orders. Like uh, one of the interviews, they asked me, you have been training people back in your country that were younger than you. And then now you're getting trained by people that are younger than you. How, how do you think or how do you feel about this? And uh, I think the best answer for this is that I usually tend to say that being a physician means you are a lifelong learner and you will stay learning till the end of your career. And um, regardless of your age, it's a continuous process. And that's why we tend to have those continuous medical education. That's the whole philosophy behind this thing. I think also having those clinical rotation where you do the rotation with residents helps you a lot get handling those stuff and learning more so that when you go to the real thing, you're more than prepared or ready to handle those stuff. What if there is a situation where you're asked if, let's say that attending physician is doing something which you don't believe that is the right approach, you know, how would you deal with, with that if that comes up in an interview? Well, uh, actually, this question has been uh, really asked, and uh, it's uh, one of the questions that they ask because they want to know how we're going to handle those tough situation and stressful situation. And uh, I think the best answer to this is always speak with the person that you're having this problem with privately. You, ha you have to go privately and speak with him and present your idea. You have to do it in a humble way that you don't sound like you're... Uh, mentoring or you're coaching uh, and it's tough but the best way to do it i believe is to be like in a private setting also to be as humble as you can be so dr michael thank you so much for your time today you're always welcome to co-host another session here with us i i had uh, you know i thoroughly enjoyed myself and and you know and whenever throughout your residency after you graduate whenever you come across a, a topic a subject that you believe we need to talk about and we need to get the word out please reach out to us and uh, you're always welcome to to call us with us thank you thank you dr michael and if you haven't done so already please watch or listen to episode number 65 part one and we look forward to seeing you next week for part three episode number 66. if you are listening to this podcast be sure to watch the video form on youtube at youtube.com forward slash AC Medical Org. And for any questions or comments, uh, please go ahead and email our producers at uh, podcast at acmedical.org or visit our website, acmedical.org. Thank you for your time, Dr. Mikhail, Dr. Eskander, and all of our listeners for supporting us. We will see you next week.